What's going on folks? Welcome to the bar. For today's video, we're stepping back into the world of Kaiju number 8. This week is the Kaiju Showcase, and since I've been copyright striked to death, this is the perfect time to do a little bit of a Kaiju catch-up video. So if you haven't read the most recent chapters of Kaiju number 8, those being like chapters 15 through 20, be sure to read them and then head on back for this discussion. And this isn't a free plug or anything, but if you were wondering how I read Kaiju number 8, I do all of my manga reading on viz.com. And from there, you can read the three most recent chapters for free. But enough free product placement. If you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you can catch all of my hot Kaiju number eight videos the minute they drop. Let's get started. Okay, so where we left off last time, the humanoid Kaiju had just shown up and pretty much murdered Reno and Furuhashi. But luckily, at the last moment, Kafka arrived to help dispose of the humanoid kaiju. But that's not all that happened. Let's break it down. I'll meet you over by the wall. Okay, so get this. Despite showing up and saving his two classmates slash superiors, additionally, Kafka saves two average Defense Force soldiers from certain death. But unfortunately, my suspicions were 100% true. The fight between the humanoid kaiju and Kafka wasn't short-lived at all. They spent like three chapters on it. But during the battle, the humanoid kaiju learned that Kafka is no laughing matter here. If the monster didn't target the humans and get Kafka to defend random agents, the odds are Kafka would have torn him in half. And either way, after punking out the humanoid kaiju and forcing Kafka to throw his body in defense of the Defense Force agents, the humanoid kaiju then gets away saying that this fight has helped him understand Kafka's profile. And something during this fight happened that was really, really cool and I kind of called it out to a degree. One day I was hanging around the bar and I noticed that Kafka's face looks like it ends at the back of his neck. Like, not his, not his mouth, his face. Now this one tiny detail just tells me and all of us that his kaiju form is merely whatever that he wishes it to look like. Kafka wants to stay a mini humanoid kaiju, and I have a feeling that if he wants to flex and have the entire top of his face come off for an attack, he will. But during the chapters when Mr. Humanoid Kaiju makes a break for it, the existing problem becomes the soldiers who were there initially that Kafka took the kaiju bullets for. Now look, from their point of view, they see an 8 foot kaiju that's speaking, so they immediately radio and the worst possible character to show up shows up. Well, the worst for Kafka, that is. For us, it's like, hell yeah, but it's Captain Hoshina, and he is absolutely relentless. When I mean he's a real slice of Dysa, I mean he slices him up, man. And there were a few times I was shook, man. I was wondering if Kafka was going to get captured. And look, I gotta point it out, and I say this kind of frequently, but when something has been made a point to be mentioned, in this case, Hoshina's blades being introduced in Act 1, in Act 2 or Act 3, it was going to appear. If you talk about the gun in Act 1, it's gonna go off in Act 2. It's called Chekhov's gun. And yeah, like I said about Hoshina's blades, earlier during this shit show, Hoshina gave Kafka the spiel about his family and his expertise in taking out mini-sized threats. So for us, the reader, it was only a matter of time before Kafka faced off against him. And man, did they face off. At some points, I told you, Hoshina had me wondering if he was going to break out anything even more intense. And from this fight now, we know people are able to do crazy special moves and that Hoshina and a few others have a limiter on their suit that needs to be released. And he was able to draw out a pretty decent amount. I think it was like somewhere near 92%. I'm really wondering what happens to a person when they reach 100%. You know, maybe something good, maybe something bad, who knows? Long story short is Kafka finally figures out a way to escape Hoshina. But during the process of this fight, we see that Hoshina might possibly know that the shifter is Kafka. Now that's only mere suspicion on my part, and I feel like Hoshina is more of an experienced fighter and might have pieced up Kafka if given the chance. But right now, Kafka is just stronger, like pure power, but that's literally nothing if Hoshina can carve him up. Kafka needs to learn defense. Hoshina's an intuitive guy though, he knows when something or rather someone is trying to kill him. 
So he was probably onto the fact that this humanoid kaiju was hesitant from the first strike. As for Kafka's secret being in jeopardy, my fears were immediately belayed. Because during this fight, it's further established that Kafka's obscenely strong, and I'm excited to see him learn how to control his kaiju abilities. And I feel like there's so many combinations and possibilities for him to be able to manipulate his body and do something absolutely nuts. Like imagine if he's able to shoot up and become like a 60 kilometer kaiju, that would be insane. It'd be pretty funny if they do like a colossal titan reference. Either way, I think it's only a matter of time before another kaiju shifter shows up, bad or good. But after that long and strenuous fight against Hoshina, Kafka figures out a way to escape, for now. Though now it's going to be interesting to see how Kafka kind of talks his way out of this situation, being that he's in Hoshina's squad and directly reports to him. There's been coincidence after coincidence, and Hoshina is a pretty smart man. So the fact that Reno and Kafka have been seen twice in the same location that Kaiju Number 8 has, it's all but certain that Hoshina knows what's going on. Especially because he already has that lingering suspicion. And I really do enjoy the fact that Hoshina and Kafka are solid rivals for one another, so I really hope the dynamic between them doesn't change too much with the reveal. I know some people would argue that, you know, Reno's always going to be Kafka's eternal rival, but, you know, Kafka's always trying to set that good example for Reno. Kafka sees Reno as someone who could just be better than him, never really wanting to compete with him. And seeing Kafka fight Hoshina during these chapters, it has me thinking, how much could it actually take to bring down Kafka? Hoshino was all over him, he found his core, he beat the piss out of him. And pretty much in his own unique way, he kinda showed to Kafka that he's as vulnerable as he is in his human self if he doesn't figure out how to use his abilities wisely. And look, I know for a video covering 5 chapters, it's kind of short, but my last review was for chapter 15, but in the span of those 5 chapters, Kaiju number 8 takes its time in developing those fights. In that span of time, we saw Reno and Furuhashi do their best against the humanoid kaiju before Kafka shows up and gives them the business. And I mean, I guess I do have a gripe with some chapters, they kind of just felt like 6 pages, you know? As for chapters 18 through 20, those 3 chapters I have no gripes with whatsoever. I love how every 3 chapters of Kaiju number 8 act like mini arcs. Fights are resolved quickly in Kaiju number 8, but at the same time, they're fleshed out and they're sincere. And since we're talking about sincerity, sincere time is taken with the translation. So shout out to David Evelyn, the official translator of Kaiju number 8. But yeah, when Kafka and Hoshina fought one another, it was pretty obvious to me that Hoshina was going to be able to slice up Kafka. How they were going to elaborately configure that into plot points was, you know, what I couldn't guess. Though as for the next chapter, it comes out on Christmas Eve, so let's get hype! Other than that everyone, I think that's gonna do it for this week's video. I really enjoy doing these Kaiju Number no. 8 catch up videos for everyone, so if you like them too, make sure you hit that like button. And if you think that Kafka is gonna be able to hide his identity for a little bit longer, let me know in the comments down below. And this is Dan, signing off. Happy Holidays. Cheers.